Ah, Wendell G, welcome back to the Worldtopia Baseball League. Uh, we're still in May 2045, and I'm joined tonight by Gusta. Gusta, what'd you do with Pee Wee Man? <laughs> uh, I'm trying to get rid of him, actually. So. Oh, oh man. Having nostalgia for Pee Wee. So, <laughs> so uh, I want to talk to you tonight about um, the two expansion teams, uh, Lisbon and uh, New Zealand. And... Um, I, I tell you what, New Zealand has kind of surprised me. They're semi-competitive in the South League. Did they surprise you? Um, yeah. I mean, it's good for me that they're doing better than me. But uh, yeah, right. Uh, yeah, they're they're doing okay. Uh huh. Are you uh, speaking of you? Are you still in the the tank sweepstakes? Um, yeah. The whole thing with that Gavin Anderton trade was, if I could get him for a second, then I'd be willing to do it. So, oh, right. you was willing to do it. I figured, you know, um, it was good value for a second, and he's young. Mm -hmm. If he gets a little better, maybe I can flip him in a year or two for something go. better. Mm -hmm. There you go. You know where to go when you need a first-round pick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no problem. <laughs> yeah, man, i tell you what. I, man, I, I love that Kidwell, that Dwayne Kidwell. Where would he come from? Has he, he been in your system for a while? Uh, yeah, I believe he was a fine from my scout again. Oh, wow, man. Yeah. Uh, let's take a look at him real quick. Let me uh -huh. see. Sure. I've, yeah, I pulled him up here. Kid Will. Amateur free agent from Jamaica. Signed a minor yeah. league contract. Yeah. So, actually, uh -huh. I got him at uh, during the free agency. So oh, my Oh, the IFA for a $53,000 bonus. Man. Yeah. Wow. This one of those guys who's... Um, you know, at first his uh, ratings were projected pretty decent, 55s all around, and he just kept uh, blipping up in those, uh, you know, potential ratings and then actual ratings. So, yeah, uh, work ethic and intelligence again. Mm -hmm. So I went after him pretty yeah. quick. I think he signed rather quickly when I went after him that year. Mm -hmm. If I remember it right. Uh, very high intelligence and high work ethic. Also, very ultra high greed. Yeah. So he's gonna get expensive one day. Yeah. All right. Well, he'll hopefully he'll be on your roster by the time that happens. That's right. You got it, man. <laughs> <laughs> we are on the same page. Oh, that's good uh, to hear. That is good to hear. Um, I I've got the budget. If I keep winning, if I keep winning, Mr. Ben Ali is gonna keep keep the money rolling in. That's right now. That's kind of a problem for me though. So let's not talk about that. Let's talk about good stuff. <laughs> So are you? Uh, you're sitting at 11 and 17. Um, are you on track for the the tanking that you are going for this this season? E oh well, I started out a little better than I thought I would. Um, mm -hmm. um, I got some big hits and key spots in some games, mm -hmm. and I was like, so. I mean, I think I should be a little worse than I am. Yeah. Um, outside of a few big hits and some decent pitching, mm -hmm. every few games here and there. Yeah, I've. I've I'm actually doing a little better than I thought I would, but with my last, the last sim, I think I won one out of mm -hmm. six games. So I think we're we're coming back to earth. So uh, yeah, I think I should be up there for the, be fighting for a top two, top three pick. I think. Right. Well, folks, you you heard it right here. Um, hit up at Gusta for some for some good deals on uh, prospects. Anybody that's helping him win, he'd be happy to move them. So, <laughs> for sure. That's right, man. So uh, yeah, so. Um, I kind of thought New Zealand would give you a run for the money towards the bottom of the barrel, but um, but they are uh, they're kind of elevating a little bit. In fact, at 13 and 19, they're about a game just a game under their Pythag uh, prediction. What's up with the Kiwis so far this year? Um, from what I'm seeing, uh, Connor's doing okay. He's got a 385 on base and eight home runs, so I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure that's a big reason why they're doing pretty good. Uh, uh, yeah. He's on what? What's his contract? Four point two million, and is it a one year? Yeah, it's a one year contract. So, oh man, he is forty years old. Yeah, he's he's trying to punch his ticket to the hall or something with yeah, the year he he's is. having. Yeah, he is. Eight homers. Wow, man. Well, he's only hitting two thirty eight, but that three eighty five OBP, he can get on base for you. Yeah, it's like he, uh, uh, Doe was saying the other day, he's got the old man thing. He's got the. The good eye and the good power. Yeah, he got his uh, 2,000th hit. Mm -hmm. So yeah, awesome. he's 
He's doing well, and then let's see. Uh, 2,000 two hits, he did. He got it just a couple of weeks ago. Um, is that an automatic punch to the Hall of Fame? Uh, in in our league, it might be. It should uh, be. You know, it's, yeah, it's pretty pretty young league. I think that might do it. That's right. I know um, uh, B-Dubstep is uh, actively marketing everybody on his team for anybody 25 and under. So uh, you guys want a piece of history, come get Ryan Connor. He's on a decent <laughs> contract, man. Yeah. Knocking them taters. He's uh, first on base on balls. Offensively, everything else is kind of... And fifth and run scored, so mm -hmm. he seems to be getting some uh, getting some guys on base and knocking them in when he needs them. So, nice. yeah, what else is going on? Um, looks like our tech shit the bed and is, is pitching well, really well this season. Yeah, um, he's three and one with a two eighty eight ERA, and he's also on a he's a lefty. He's on a four point two million dollar contract, but he is signed through twenty forty seven. Uh, he's 32, so there's a little bit of uh, age risk there. Three straight wins, going six innings or more. Nice. In his last three starts, so, only give up two or run, two, two end runs. Are you? Um, let's say you were in the position of one of these um, uh, expansion uh, GMs. W would you have? Would you have signed the kind of roster that that B Dub signed here? Uh, if I was an expansion team, no, I would have. I, I went to sign any free. I, I would have waited until everybody got all the big names got signed and just went after value signings and mm -hmm. and have a, an embarrassment of a year, I guess. Right. So that you get that one one pick. Yeah. Um, get the one one pick. Save payroll for IFAs. If there's a big one out there, make sure I have enough payroll to go get them. Just buy all the IFAs you can get. Yeah. Yeah. And be sure and sign all the draft picks that you possibly can. Yeah. Gotcha. So basically just set set the uh, target on the young young prospects. Yeah. I would uh, mm -hmm. yeah, put everything towards four, gotcha. five, six years out. Well, you know, i got to give it up to old Dubstep. He's, I, I like a team that competes, you know. I do. Mm -hmm. um, His and, preference. Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean if, he can, if he can add one or two guys a year or maybe, mm -hmm. you know, two to three solid guys a year, I mean, he can be, compete, uh, you know, mm -hmm. competing in two or three years. Yeah, I mean, heck, add two two solid guys a year. I mean, you play nine guys out in the out in the field, and you need to uh, what um, twelve guys in the six five in the rotation and six or seven in relief. So, mm -hmm. and relievers are pretty easy to come by anymore. Um, seems like you can, heck, starting speaking of what, Australia, you know, a starting pitching rotation out of um, free agency is uh, just. Um, Putting a hammer on uh, the South League this year. So. Yeah, I mean, uh, I made a deal with him for Mark Coates and Jay Hong, and I mean, the, that seems to be working for him. Hong sitting 328 with eight homers. Hong Coates, Hong. yes, he is. Hong Hong and Hong Coates is uh, hitting 361 mm -hmm. with a 439 on base right now. But that's only in 36 at bats. He's only he's only mm -hmm. playing against lefties, but yeah, those mm -hmm. guys are producing for him. He, look at his lineup. I mean, his mm -hmm. lineup looks pretty damn good. It does. It does. Well, you know, um, Australia has got that insane baseball field. Um, it's a dome with AstroTurf, but uh, left-handed hitters hit at at average, but it punishes right-handed hitters. I want to say right-handers are at an 85% rate or something like that for, for a batting average. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, home runs, I think... Everybody is punished with home runs, but righties more than lefties. So and but doubles and triples, the gap the the gaps are big out in Australia. So it's a really weird ballpark for him to be hitting so well. I mean look at his rankings. I mean he's first or second in pretty much everything offensively and defensively, outside of uh pitching stats he's based on balls fourth and strikeouts third, but everything else mm -hmm. is first or second. Yeah, it is. Good night. Oh, I'm sorry. He's third in hits and fourth in stolen bases, but mm -hmm. still, I mean, on base is first, slugging is first, on base plus slugging is first, runs scored first. Starting average. Mm -hmm. Starting ERA second, earn run average second, runs last. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Night. His team is killing it right now. They are killing it. Yeah. I tell you what, they kill me. They kill <laughs> me and left me for dead, man. They 
They pitched three shutout games on Moscow in a row. Man, I just wow. And yeah. this this is without Paco uh, Duran Duran is gone. Mm-hmm. He's out for three months, and Jean Kim is out for two months, both with yeah. arm injuries. Well, he mm-hmm. he might come down a little bit with those two injuries, but right now, I mean, yeah. his team is on fire. Yeah, yeah, it is. It really is. He's getting a lot of great production. Um, I know last year he got he won the Andy Durach sweepstakes with OU with Amsterdam and got the got a nice middle infielder, left-handed hidden middle infielder um, for I think a second round pick and. Uh, the Raj is hitting 319 with a 381 OBP. So, you know, he's getting great production out of these guys. Yeah, he is. So, yeah. Looks uh, like his uh, lineup is humming right now. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, um, pitching, man. I So, Australia, basically, I mean, Paco has been the one guy he has held on to all this time, but. Uh, he has basically pulled together a rotation out of free agency and trades. And um, so it, I mean, it looks like we're talking about uh, New Zealand. You know, you can pretty much, I guess, I guess the idea is just pull together your position players and then pull whoever you can out of free agency. And, uh, yeah. W- as far as pitching. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, you can follow the same thing. Just. Mm-hmm. Add maybe uh, two or three solid pieces and mm-hmm. just keep on building from there. I mean, you can do that. I mean, especially with his payroll, I mean, you might have to overpay for a guy here or there, but mm-hmm. I mean, if, if you want to win right away, you can do it with through free agency pretty quickly, I think. Yeah, which is good. It's good to have that option. Yeah. That's, uh, that's kind of the anti-Wendell G uh, approach where you pay for the best pitching you can get and hope, that the, hope you can get enough position players, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, so so tell me about, uh, we talked about New Zealand a little bit. Tell me about Lisbon. Lisbon has sunk right to the straight to the bottom of the North League standings. Yeah, Lisbon, I mean, I looked. I was looking at their roster earlier. I mean, they got some guys, too. I mean, if they wanted to tank, I think he said, uh, I mean, he's got some young guys on there. He's got some older, decent guys. He's got. Stute on there, pretty decent. He's not performing right now, but Stute's mm-hmm. a good player. Yeah, Stute's, Stute's old too, isn't he? How old is that guy? Uh, about fifty. No, thirty-two. Thirty-two. 32. That, that guy, he was. Uh, I want to say he was a Moscow Mule the first few years he was in the league, and I know he's all over the uh, Moscow um, record books. And, yeah. Uh, I. I mean, he was playing in. 2033, I believe. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, WBL NL Rookie of the Month in 2033, uh, and then an All Star in 20. So this guy has been around 2033, 2030, 12. This is 13 years now. Kid started when he was 19, 18 or 19. So, yeah, and uh, he signed Challen and uh-huh. Meineke out of free agency for his pitching staff. And he got traded for Ramos. There's a lot of Key West guys on there. Um, then Juan Sanchez. Where did he come from? Is Ramon Ramos a Key West product? Uh, yeah, I traded him. I believe I did. Uh, do, 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 do. Yep. Yeah, he got him in the Miranda trade when right. I traded up for one of my draft picks. Gotcha. So, so he's young. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can try to build around him. Right. Uh, he's got a he's got a good closer in Fod. I mean, he's 38, but if someone's looking for mm-hmm. some type of back end relief out, maybe he can right. dump for a second or right. second or third round pick, depending and, on how the market goes. And towards. Todd's contract is uh, 4.4 million is pretty sustainable for a lot of teams. Yeah. Uh, how, if how, is it just this for through through, through this year or it's next year too? This year and next year. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, let's see. It, it might be a team option next year. I don't know about that. If it's a team option, yeah, he. I mean, he could get a decent pick for him. I believe if he wanted to shop mm-hmm. him, I mean, if someone wanted to go that route to short him back into the bullpen, mm-hmm. I mean, because I think in the playoffs, World Series, starting pitching and back into your bullpen is pretty, pretty important. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't think uh, teams make enough moves at. 
well last year. I, I, I would say last year a lot of people, a lot of teams made some moves last year, so I shouldn't say that. But you feel like people don't uh, they don't make the moves they need to make at midseason? Mm, typically, no. But last year they actually did. But mm-hmm. seems to me people want prospects more than they want to win. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, what's the point of having the prospects when you have them and not go for the championship if you have a chance to get a championship? True. True. Yeah, I don't know, man. I kind of like the idea of, um, you know, I look at my Moscow roster and so many of those guys have been at Moscow since day one. And uh, I just, I don't know, man. I just, I like to sit, I like to hold on to what I got. Yeah. I don't know when to fold them. You know what I mean? Yeah, but you make, you make, (laughs) you make moves. You make moves when you, when you need to. I mean, you're not scared to make a move though. Yeah, I'll make a move. I just, um, I just, uh, I kind of envy players like OU and Doe who just go after moves, you know, I, I, man, I can't do that. I got to agonize over every move. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm curious to see here that um, uh, Lisbon picked up a couple of former mules and they're pretty much performing like a couple of mules. Oh, Lieutenant Dan is hitting um, 105 with a 171 OBP. So, um, you know, I'm not happy to see that, but um but I'm happy it's not happening on my team. <laughs> and uh, he picked up uh, Yassin Ben Jamil, who's also hitting 087 with a 154 OBP. So Ben Jamil doing what he does, and everybody yeah. always finds a roster spot for him. <laughs> I mean, you look at his def. I mean, some guys. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, it's just it's just like I don't know. You know, it's just glamour and glitz. I mean, you see the stars, you see the ratings on the defensive side, and you think. He can't be that bad, man. Yeah, I know. And then, uh, and then he gets on your team, and you're like, ah. Oh. Well, he... old, uh, Spider Eyes, Pancho Nino, is uh, holding his own at third base. He's hitting 256 with a 320 OBP, but good. God, the guy's 36 years old, man. Yeah, uh, he is doing well. 36 years old, mm-hmm. playing well. I'm not sure if he can flip too much for Pancho, but mm-hmm. if he wanted to do that, but he's playing well. He is playing. He's a good third baseman, excellent third baseman. Yeah, I mean, uh, I I don't know either of these guys' uh, team-building strategy, so, I mean, you can't even take too much from the draft or what they've done during the offseason because it's, I mean, this is just their first year, so it mm-hmm. should be interesting, though. Yeah, indeed. indeed. So, um, Porky's hitting pretty well. He, man, I look at his ratings, though. He has fallen off the cliff, but he's yeah. hitting 302. That's funny. You take You take... Agawa's stat or uh, mm-hmm. characteristics, and line them up against Jamil, and then mm-hmm. look at their numbers, and it's I know, just right? it's absolutely opposites. <laughs> I know, right? That's just baffling, man. Baffling. It is, and it's not just a one-year seasonal opposite; it's season after season after season. Yeah, uh, Agawa plays above his ratings, and yeah. Jamil constantly goes below his. Goes below those. Uh, Lou, I don't know anything about this guy, but Lou Ling Chow is pl- hitting very well. He's leading um, the Conquistadors in batting average with 355 batting average, 416 OBP, and he signed to. Did we already talk about him? He signed to a 4.2 million dollar contract, and I think he's extended through next year too. Yeah, good hitter. Can't uh, play a lick of defense though. Oh, uh, he's at first. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> at least in my opinion I mean first yeah. I, it doesn't matter if he has if, I mean if he can hit like this it doesn't matter if he has a glove or not yeah I guess that's true that's true man that's I'm resistant I resist <laughs> I, I, I want a, I want defense man yeah I mean if you got a bat at first you don't need a glove yeah it's it's pretty pretty minimal the defensive mm-hmm. I think impact so uh, in the outfield, uh, another of Lisbon's pick pickups was Francisco Sanchez. Now was was he the guy who? Is this the guy who was a? Um, yeah, he was on our Moscow roster. He did well for us in 2044 last year. He hit um, 271, 355 for us with a 1.0 WAR at the end of the season. But man, he just he doesn't like it in Lisbon. He's hitting 198 with a 259 OBP. Not a happy man. Yeah, it doesn't seem like he likes it in the two spot. Um, let's see. I think I usually played him in the five spot. Six, six, I think, actually. Yeah, maybe that's where he should put him because he's not doing too well in that two spot. Yeah. Uh, he's only hit in the second spot 
so oh. far this year, so I, I couldn't tell you. That's right. How he's hitting in other spots. Uh, we don't have I mean, the stats. Well, I guess I could go to the almanac from last year and pull him up, but yeah. Um, he Sometimes, I mean, sometimes that makes a difference. Some guys want to mm-hmm. hit in a certain spot. Sometimes, you mm-hmm. know, if a guy's struggling, I'll move him around, see if he can get. You do that too. That's, yeah. You do that too? Yeah. Well, I thought I was kind of the only one who, who messed around with that, but I, I move my guys around if. Um, if somebody just isn't getting it done, and I think they should, I move them all over the place to find a, you know, a spot in the lineup where they, you know, maybe protected by another bat. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. I do that a lot. Um, I am my, the guy I have a problem with is my second baseman. I, I mean, no matter where I put him, he doesn't hit, and he should be hitting a little better than he is. But I mean, I try to find some spots for him sometimes. Talk about Egberts. Yeah. I like Egberts. I've always, I always liked Egberts. In fact, I don't remember if you and I talked about him at one time, but um, I always liked him. He's a, he's a little guy, five foot nine, two hundred five pounds, but um, he's, he's having, a, yeah, he's having a tough year. I can see that hitting two hundred. Yeah, I've tried him second, fifth, sixth, eighth, seventh. <laughs> but I should put him. I give him a few more bats in a few spots, but. Yeah, anybody who, who, yeah, who doesn't know what Goose is talking about, I'm highlighting on my screen here. Um, if you go to their, uh, you know, the player's um, uh, stats page, you can see how they hit, you know, at any point in the um, pitching count and behind in the count, hitting the count, what order in the lineup that they hit. And uh, with some guys, it's a huge difference. Um, like, um, it wasn't Jaime, one of the guys on my roster, it might have been Valdine, uh, the dude only would hit like in the three, four, five spots. When I moved him somewhere else, it's like he couldn't. Oh, Dominique, that's who I'm thinking of. Uh, Gonnett would hit um, great in the one, two spots, but he moved down in the rotation and his batting average would fall off. And uh, so I was really reluctant. He was hit, he was just knocking out these homers. You know, one year he led the WBL on home runs, but. Um, but um, maybe this is my microphone. But um, it wasn't until I moved him into the one-two spot that he really thrived. So yeah, uh, I, you, yeah, I, I do look at that. Yeah. Uh-huh. All right. Um, what do you? Uh, so what do you think is ahead for? I see you. I see you brought in. Um, let's see, I see Duarte's in your lineup, and he is. He's continuing to suck it up. Um, yeah. What a disappointment! I don't, I don't have much, so I just put him out there for his glove. So well, he's helping you achieve your goals. Yeah. Of, yeah. Uh, of being crappy. Uh, I got uh, Dennis down in the, down in AAA, but he's not quite ready yet, so I'm just gonna keep him down there. Mm-hmm. And uh, I moved Dennis to third base, so uh, see if I can get his ratings up to about a 50 before I bring him up on the eye and contact. Let's see. He's killing it in AAA right now, 345 average, 446 wow. on base. Mm-hmm. Bill Dennis, I'm looking at him right now. Yeah. 24 years old. Hmm. I want to keep him down there until he at least hits 50 and then mm-hmm. give him a shot. Mm-hmm. Nice. That uh, 65 I and uh, 80 avoid K potential is kind of interesting. Yeah. See how that works out for him. Yeah, indeed. Man, anybody with a 65 I is... You know, it wasn't until, I guess, in the past couple of seasons that I have really begun to understand the importance of I. I had always pretty much, I guess you had that, we had that conversation on the boards, and um, uh, I, I pretty much equated avoid K with I for a long time. I knew they were different, but I kind of internally just equated them. But, you know, I look at a player like Duarte, who has a really bad I, and uh, I begin to realize why... You know, it's a big difference. And, um, mm-hmm. So, like, I, I put it as avoid K as being able to put his bat on the ball with two strikes, mm-hmm. you know, putting the ball in play, avoiding strikeouts. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I is is him determining pitches, balls, or strikes, uh, right. mm-hmm. or whether he swings at bad pitches or good pitches. Mm-hmm. Um, if he has a low I, usually they're, they have a lot of strikeouts. So. Right. So, uh, Gavin Anderton, uh, are you going to put him in your everyday lineup? Uh, yeah, I'm going to try to put him at first and see how he does. Oh, at first, okay. 
Yeah. Uh, I'm going to give him some time at first and give him some time at catcher. Mm-hmm. Um, see how he looks at first. Uh, had some flexibility to his... That's an excellent... To his, to his arsenal. Right. Excellent way to create some value there. Yeah. Uh, you know, have you tried putting him on the pitching mound? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Right. No, well, um, I think I think he was a free agent signed by. Uh, I mean, he was a fine by one of my scouts too, Anderton. Actually, uh-huh. cool. So my cool. the scout I had previously, he found uh-huh. me all types of talent. I wish he never retired. Uh-huh. Well, I'm going to go public with one of my uh, one of my little secrets here. Um, are, have you got the game up in front of you in some fashion? Yeah. Okay, pull up my roster, and then go to my Triple A team. Yeah, you know, I wasn't I wasn't planning for the great reveal here, but talking about Anderton, I just uh, kind of carried away in the moment. So go to uh, Katake. Uh-huh. Look at look at my rotation, and um, you'll see I've got one, two, three, four, five, six starters in the rotation. Uh huh. And my number six starter, Alfredo Sauce. <laughs> Click on Alfredo Sauce. Alrighty. Look at his pitches. See what pitch he's got that's really good? Oh, he's got the knuckle. Yep. Uh, look at how he did in... Um, see, his his ratings are definitely not WBL potential, right? Right. But you go back and look. I, I This guy caught my eye back in single A, and he pitched 403 with a 1.40 whip in single A. And um, I moved him up to double A, and he... Pretty much pitched exactly the same, 435 ERA and a 1.35 whip. So I thought he's he's of an age to go ahead and move up to AAA. So I'm this is a great experiment this year to see if he looks like he's kind of mastered the knuckleball. Mm-hmm. But that's I, all you need if the, you're a knuckleball. Right. That's all you need. Well, and I'm wondering, does movement and control even matter a damn if he's got the knuckleball? So um, that's interesting. Yeah. So he's my great. You see his velocity there. Yeah, 86, 89, something like that. Uh, 84 to 86. 84, 86, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, so that's, he's my great experiment. So. Oh, that's interesting. Uh-huh. Uh, I'll have to look out for that. I mean, you could use him as like a long man, maybe. Uh-huh. Mop up. Uh, yeah, in your bullpen or right. something like that. Spot starter or long man. Right. Uh, he could give some relief to your short relief guys. I'd love to start this guy in my starting rotation. Uh, you you want to go a starter? I don't like, uh, Knuckleballers as starters, but no, uh, give it why, a try. See if why not? Why not? Uh, typically, knuckleballers are 500 pitchers because they have no idea where the ball's going. So it depends on depends on the really on the weather. Yeah, yeah, but they can be like uh, that's true. They can be like a neutralizing force if you know you're going to be playing a tough team. You know, they give you at least a 50-50 chance of beating them, right? So. Yeah, that's true. I mean, if he, if he's like your fourth or fifth guy, I mean that's a decent that's a decent fourth fifth starter. Yeah. So anyway, he's my great experiment. So you get to see him first. And, uh, oh, right on. I'll keep an eye on him. Yeah. Him now I believe someone uh, drafted didn't didn't someone draft a Dunkle Baller also like were, a year or two ago. There was uh, there was actually uh, there was two knuckle ballers in this draft. I don't know where they went, but there was two other knuckle ballers in the league. Um, I think Wolfman has one. Go look in, Let's go look in the Cobble system. I think he's in the AAA. Um, as far as this year's draft, I can search mm-hmm. where the two knuckleballers were. Hold on. Yeah. Let me pull up my spreadsheet. I can find the knuckleballers. Yeah, I'm blowing my cover here because this is this is kind of a secret project I've been working on for uh, for about the last season or so, you know. But. Uh, but like all secret projects, you know, at some point you gotta you gotta come come open with it. So um, that's funny. So everybody can share in it. Let's see, where is this guy? Where is he? I'm looking in the cobble. He's not in AAA. With I don't have any knuckleballers. I have two guys with knuckle curves. Wow, which it's different. Is, totally different. Yeah, which isn't even close to a knuckleballer. But I don't have any starting pitchers with a knuckleball oh. this year's draft. Okay. I hmm okay. At least the way. Go look in free agents. Free agents. Oh, I I, I don't have a spreadsheet for all the free oh, agents. Okay. I just did the draft. Uh, oh, I that's can- right. You're looking at the draft. Okay, gotcha. 
because I got them listed for each individual pitch that they have in their arsenal. So go to um, Cobble's Double A team, the Burjand Whipsaws, and there's this guy named Yoon Tai Kwok. He's a left-hander. Um, and just on the surface of things, the guy doesn't look very good at all. But he's got he's got the knuckleball. And uh, I uh, approached Wolfman uh, earlier in the season, in the off season, to see if I could um, trade for this guy. And uh, he was having nothing of it. He knew what he had, so he was holding on to this guy. Um, and he has pitched. Yun Tai Kwok has pitched well this year in Double A, three thirty eight ERA and a one thirty four WHIP. Yeah. So, left hander, left hand knuckleballer. Now he's got he's got more. His velocity is less, eighty to eighty three, but he's got uh, more pitches in his arsenal than uh, Al- Al- Alfredo Sauce. It's it's interesting. He's got a knuckleball and a changeup. How do you <laughs> throw it harder? I don't know. <laughs> how does uh, a change? How do you throw a changeup off a knuckleball? <laughs> this? Well, presumably your changeup is your changeup from your fastball, right? But he didn't even have a fastball that he yeah. used. So that's funny. Uh, mediocre slider. Sometimes yeah, he's got. Yeah. The guy's got two quality starts this year. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, those are the two. Um, there is one in. Somebody has one in their international complex, uh, and I don't remember who it is off the top of my head. Um, so I've actually, um, I want, kind of wanted to keep this quiet on the down low because I was kind of hoping that whoever has them in the international complex would release them. But then, <laughs> but, but then we found that those releases from the international complex don't go anywhere. They still show up on the team uh, under team control. So, so there goes that, that hope. Oh, that's interesting. So we have uh, we have two legitimate minor league knuckleballers out there in the WBL, uh, none in none in the majors, and then we have the one in the international complex. And I I'll have to go digging, but I swear there were two in the draft. So there's two screwballers, but no knuckleballers. No knuckleballers. Okay. All right. Well, maybe um, maybe I misread something. I sure thought I have to dig up my notes, but. Well, anyway, that's. Uh, I thought you'd be tickled by that. That's that's what I have. Uh, that's what I've been looking for out here in the in the farm systems of all these teams. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, you know, you saying that it, it, it's interesting to hear how you know everybody looks for advantages different ways. It's kind of <laughs> yeah. crazy. Yeah, I know, right? It's a big. Uh, it's a big fake baseball world, uh, and uh, <laughs> and there's a lot of stuff to look for out there. That's for sure. The knuckle curve, you brought that up, that it's not its not at all the same as a knuckleball. Um, they only call it the knuckle curve just based on the grip. You just put uh-huh. your you just put your index finger into the ball, so your knuckles is, like, going into the ball. Mm-hmm. So it's the only the reason, the only reason, the only reason they call it knuckle curve is because of the grip. Your, your index finger... That's weird. It ...is put into the ball like it would be for a knuckleball. But your middle finger is out straight on the lace. That's gonna hurt. Yeah, it's just to create a little when, more spin on your curveball. When you throw it, do you actually yeah. flip it with that? Four yeah, finger? with this. Yeah, you. Uh, huh. You, you you flip you pop it out. You you flip your wrist. Yeah. Interesting. Like a curveball, but. Yeah. Huh. Uh, that's the only <laughs> reason they call it a knuckle curve. Nice. So uh, so do you think at this point it's gonna be a well you know what Baton Rouge. Uh, continues to amaze with its incredible powers of suckitude, and they're getting, giving Lisbon a run for that one-one pick this year. Yeah. Um, would you qualify? Would you say Baton Rouge is essentially an expansion team? Yeah, he's he's gotten rid of pretty much all of his talent. I mean, he's got mm-hmm. Miranda on there. I mean, oh, he's got Ortiz too. I mean. I mean, but look. I mean, look at these guys. I mean, most of these guys are around forty-five, fifty. He doesn't. He's not looking to add talent. He's just looking to get guys to play certain positions so he can field the team. You know what right, I mean? Right. And I mean, there's a, if that's what he wants to do, uh, mm-hmm. I don't have any problems with it. But. Right. Hopefully, rack up some one-one picks or high first-round picks, and Man. eventually get competitive again. Right. Yeah, and then uh, he'll have a he'll have a good base to build around. And mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, there's that's what I plan on doing. Mm-hmm. But my team isn't as bad as his, unfortunately. <laughs> nope. 
Well, you know, you can make that happen tonight, right now. Right now, you can make that happen. <laughs> Are you putting me on the spot for there's, Kidwell? There's a... <laughs> <laughs> you know, it wouldn't take much for a team that's on the cusp, like Key West, just moving a couple of players, a couple of key players, and that team will just go completely to hell. So, you know you want it, ha you know you want it to happen. You know, tell you what, we're going to take this call offline. <laughs> Gooks and I are going to work out a deal. <laughs> And uh, we'll be back to you next time. Thanks for listening in, guys. Thanks, Gusta, for joining me for this uh, expansion team look. All right. Thanks, man.